Hi everyone, I'm Ansley Sutter, the Social Media Training and Development Coordinator with Front Media Solutions. We'll give everyone a few more seconds to get in the webinar and then we'll get started. Thank you so much. Alrighty, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks for joining me again. I'm Ansley Sutter, Social Media Training and Development Coordinator with Front Media Solutions. Uh, last month, we hosted a webinar on a top topic in the industry. Fair housing is a subject that should be on every property manager's mind. While it wasn't legal advice, Erica Campbell and fair housing lady Nadine Green did a great job simplifying the complexities of fair housing and talked about how a property manager can protect his or her community from the legal implications of neglecting fair housing rules and regulations. So that was a great webinar. If you didn't have a chance to sit on that live, definitely uh, if you're at expert level, take a look at our training portal for our expert level customers. On that training tab, you will be able to see all of the webinars that we've hosted in the past. And at the very top, you'll see that fair housing webinar with Erica and Nadine, which was really great. So today's topic is one filled with various gray areas and blurred lines. We're going to discuss another type of protection since back, piggybacking from last month's um, Fair Housing webinar, we're going to talk about another type of protection. Privacy in the social media space is almost oxymoronic in certain, on certain levels, seeing as how the intention behind social media is really to connect with virtual strangers and share bits and pieces of your life and your brand. So the fear for many is that by participating in more social media initiatives, you're handing over your rights to your privacy. Now, in some cases, the reality is that, yes, you are. But, you know, in most cases, the terms of use for each social media outlet out there is very explicit. They tell you what they're sharing, what they're not sharing, what you're agreeing to do. So that's really kind of you know what you're getting into whenever you uh, sign up for our social media network. But being educated on the various levels of privacy available to you is extremely important. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So Facebook is a prime example of a social network that keeps you on your toes regarding privacy. The settings are ever-changing and with the implementation of the timeline layout, now is a good time to revisit your settings. So the intention today is to equip you with some tips to help you maintain your settings rather than hearing about the new change after the fact. This is for, great for leasing agents, marketers, customer care reps, and even those in HR and human resources. It's really for everyone interacting with customers and consumers through social media. So as, I'll, as I say every time, at any time, feel free to use the question box you have available to you. And I, or Courtney Anderson, who is for Rent's Manager of Social Media and Communications and Training, will answer them in real time at the end of the, or at the end of the session, whichever we get to first. Also, if you missed last month's webinar, which was with Nadine Green and Erica Campbell, please visit the expert training portal by clicking on the social media training button in the management console. Select the training tab where each month's session is located, and that's a great source. So today we'll cover privacy controls pertinent to you that you should know about, especially if you're going to interact with you know, work associates or other people in the industry through your personal profile, which is your Facebook profile. We'll also talk about how you can maintain your profile by segmenting your friends into groups, Safeguard your photos and avoid being tagged without your permission. That's always the worst. And as always, I'll offer, I'll offer some tips to take with you that you can apply today as well as some helpful links that you can use. So we'll get started today by talking about why you need to maintain a professional and clean Facebook profile if you're going to be interacting with people in your industry or even toggling between speaking as yourself or switching over to the voice of your brand if you're a community manager or an admin of your brand's Facebook business page. So I keep on saying the word community manager, and for some of you it means two different things. So the first meeting I'm referring to is refers to the person working at an apartment community's leasing office. That's literally what a community manager, leasing manager does. 
This is the person who interacts with residents and prospects on a daily basis. Now the other meaning I'm referring to is a social media term community manager, which refers to a person who manages a brand's online community, um, which is a part of the job scope, is maintaining a brand's Facebook page as an, as an admin. So the two different meanings definitely cross. You know, a leasing manager or a community manager at an apartment community may do the same thing that a community manager will do for a social media, you know, a brand. So they can be interspersed differently. So your, digi your digital integrity plays an integral role in your overall protection, reputation. We always know that. We actually did a reputation webinar a few months ago, I think in November. But, you know, every time we do a training, we always harp on the fact that you should always make sure that your, rep your reputation is being maintained in the way and the perception that you would like it to be maintained. Your online image is oftentimes ingrained in the public perception prior to a face-to-face -face meeting. We know that a lot of times we come into contact with one another virtually before we do face-to-face. -face. And in most cases, your online image is your reputation because it's the only part of your persona people may see. So as a result, your online reputation can have a direct correlation to uh, your consumer's first impression of your brand, which is really important. So for most companies, an employee should ensure the privacy settings are set to only reveal information that is work appropriate while on the clock. So most companies prohibit community managers from exposing posted content related to you know, religion, politics, or having a bias and or prejudice against gender, race, and ethnic background on the brand's Facebook page. Now I'm talking about you know, if a community manager or an admin is talking on the brand's Facebook page, those things most of the time are prohibited. You know, if you're on your Facebook and you're, if you're on your personal profile, that's really up to you. But what I'm talking about is in regard to speaking for your brand. So this is not for obvious reasons, not only for obvious reasons, but making remarks that cater to the bias of one part of your audience really excludes the other part, causing your brand to lose brand ambassadors. And ultimately, you want to... Uh, Keep all of your brand ambassadors and retain as many as you can for as long as you can. So did you know that Facebook and other social networks uh, can be used as a screening device for employers? A lot of people don't know that, but if, if you, the information is out there, then your potential employer is going to look. You know, They're not just going to stick, stick to your LinkedIn profile. They're going to go to all the avenues that you may be present on. So just be on the lookout for that. You know, this is a given for people applying to social media positions, such as myself. You know, that's why I always try to make sure that a lot of my social networks are polished because anyone could be looking at those at any time. And I open that outlet up for, you know, my, my uh, employer and future employers to do that. But regarding your digital exposure, the term public no longer means public on Facebook. It really means public in the entire social media ecosystem. So with Facebook, this means companies like Pandora, Spotify, and other brands ha that have an integrated you know, system with Facebook may be able to get a little closer to your information. But you know, this is really not to scare you. Many of us forward-thinking individuals realize that you, know, you need to have, to have that connectivity with some of our favorite brands and companies. Integration is inevitable. That's just kind of how we're moving nowadays. Rather than feeling like Facebook and other social networks are tapping into your personal life, it's best to be proactive in doing the research so you'll, so you'll know what each privacy setting means. Ultimately, it's your responsibility to safeguard your digital credibility regarding what you share. So everyone knows the, the term, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but as we have come to find, that's not often the case nowadays. You know, a few tips are, remember, are like to remember are, unlike Vegas, what happens on Facebook does not always stay on Facebook. Um, some of us have learned this the hard way. Some of us have been proactive in making sure that, you know, the content we put out there, that especially the photos we put out there, stay in one place or they're not posted at all. You know, there's a time and place for everything. So if you don't want your vacation, Cabo, whatever, you know, type pictures posted, best practice is just not to post them at all. <laughs> So this is an important tidbit to remember always, especially if your personal profile is transparent and interchangeable with your business page. 
And it, you just, it just depends on your business model. If you choose to keep your personal profile separate from your business profile or your business page, that's completely up to you. And if you cho choose to be transparent between the two, again, just being cognizant of whatever you put out there creates a digital footprint and they are easy to track back to. Another rule of thumb to remember is if you wouldn't say it to a person or stranger in public, it's probably not best to post it on Facebook. Now, anything politically, racially, sexually, and religiously charged is most of the times out of the question in regards to content you post as an admin on your Facebook business page. Now, again, if you choose to post that on your personal profile, that's completely up to you. But wow, what we're talking about today is speaking as an admin for your, for your page. So many of you have seen friends, maybe you have done this as well, post what you thought was a legitimate privacy notice on the Facebook page in the form of a status to protect you or your friends from data being collected and used by other parties. Um, the reality is that this is a fake notice. Um, you know, everyone, this went viral, viral, and this fake privacy clause went viral, causing many to jump on the bandwagon and to post it as their status. So. Things like this are what happen when we're not educated on the legitimacy of things put, pushed out on social media. You know, things move so quickly and some things look official, especially, you know, with this all rights was reserved. But in most cases, it's not legit. So just, again, doing the research and being educated is really a best practice. So the reality, to my knowledge, is that there is no entity going from page to page scooping up all the information on pages that are unprotected from this fake privacy clause. So you're really okay with that. And if you do see people posting that, don't jump on the bandwagon and do it yourself because it doesn't mean anything. I mean, in my opinion, honestly, I think that somewhere there's a child genius who just had too much time on his hands and is astonished that his prank went this far. <laughs> So I saw this meme on Mashable and just had to share it with you. So for any of you into memes, this Lord of the Rings reference nails the point on the head that I just made. So leave it up to Boromir from Lord of the Rings to give us the cold, harsh truth, which is, you know, one does not simply protect Facebook data with a status. So now that we're all clear with that, let's talk about how you can create a list to share certain areas of your life and information with groups. Now, so this is a great feature for community managers who come face to face with residents on a regular basis. You may find yourself forming like friendships or acquaintances and if someone, one of your residents or prospects, um, you know, friend requests you on Facebook, creating a list is a great way to expose what you want to expose and to keep away what you want to have hidden. So lists allow you to control and separate what acquaintances and colleagues may see versus what, you know, your close friends and family will see. By creating a list for each of the important groups in your life, maybe family, teammates, coworkers, etc., you decide who sees what you share and when you share it. So now I'm going to kind of quickly jump into Facebook and do a demo for you of how Facebook um, set up their steps to forming lists. So I'll get out of here and, and get straight to Facebook. So first what you want to do is navigate to your home button in the top right corner of your Facebook page. So that would be this area right here. <clears throat> next you'll want to click the more button, more link next to your friends. So you see here all of your content regarding you know, all the pages you manage, all your apps, friends, groups, all that stuff lives on the side of your left side of your Facebook page. So again, you'll hover over the friend section and you'll click this more button here. And just so you'll know, the more button does not appear unless you hover over this area. So we'll click this. Once you're there, what you'll want to do is create a list. So you'll come up to this area. You see I already have lists created that I've made in the past. So you'll hit this button, Create List. And for today's purposes, I'll create a group called Privacy Settings List. 
Okay, so after you create whatever name you'd like to create, which is completely editable if you choose to change that name in the future, what you'll want to do next is begin typing the names of the people you want to add to this list. Now, for this purpose, these people have got to be your friends already, but there are different ways that you can add someone who you've just um, accepted as a friend or you've added as a friend, or if you've already created a standing list, there's a way that you can go and add people to this list. But for creating a new list, this is what you would do. So we'll just start typing in names. I'll add my sister. I'll add my husband. And then, you know, you can just, the list goes on and on. So say I accidentally forgot to, uh, or I accidentally added someone. The cool thing is that if you hover over this X next to each name, you can click that and it um, takes that person out for you. So once you're finished creating your list, you would hit create. And that's how you create a list. It's pretty simple. Again, you hover over the friends section of your um, of all the whole library on your left hand side of your Facebook page at the home page. So next, what I'll do is I'll get into how you can edit a list. You know, if you already have a list in place, like we say we just created one, and you need to add or subtract names, you can start from where I showed you from where we started. Or you can simply start from this page. So what you would do from here is you would click the name of the list, standing list that you want to edit. So say that I want to edit, you know, um, my high school list. So if I want to manage this list and edit the list, you would go to manage list and you would hit edit list. And then from the drop-down menu, these are all the people I went to high school with. So if I want to add more people that I've, friend, I've friended, you know, in the recent past or take anyone out, you could do that by hovering over each person's picture. You see this X here. You can remove them from the list. Or if you want to add someone else, you can add that person. And then you can just add them as you go. and hit finish. Another cool thing about lists is that you can also add friends by clicking the add from this list suggestion. So in every time you go to one of your lists, you can, um, it'll offer you a list of suggestions and you can actually expand that and see more list suggestions and you can add these people to the list if there's someone that is relevant to that type of list. So next, I want to talk about photos. Now, photos are really just the bread and butter of Facebook. You know, that's what most everyone, other than questions on Facebook, people really uh, will engage with photos. So as marketers and community managers, we all know that a great post with an engaging photo is sure to be a home run. That's just a given. But even if you choose to allow transparency between your profile and your Facebook business page, the last thing that a community manager wants is to have his or her brand's audience member or work associates come across photos of family members or other people who have not authorized that level of visibility. So to avoid this from happening, you should really just make a beeline to your photo settings. And there are several, way, several ways to go about setting your photo album settings. So a quick way to start is to uh, navigate to your photo album. So I'll do that on my personal page. So if you navigate to your photos, you'll see here that you know all of my photos that I've uploaded live in this space. So your cover photos are the only thing that's set to public. You'll see here if you hover over each icon in the lower right-hand corner of each album, it tells you what you can and cannot do. So with Timeline, cover photos are public. So if someone were to come across my page and I'm not friends with them, the most they could see is my cover photo. So just keep that in mind. So for mobile uploads, you must set privacy level of each of each photo. So what you see here is we'll actually, you know, I'll show you my Foursquare. When I'm checking to Foursquare, sometimes I take pictures, sometimes I don't. But when I do take pictures and I share it on Facebook, all of my photos live in this Foursquare album. So if I ever wanted to edit uh, visibility for one of the pictures, you would actually, for mo again, all mobile uploaded albums, you would have to click into the album 
And then if I want to change a certain, you know, photo's visibility on Foursquare, you click that particular photo. So, you know, if I want to hide this photo of, uh, you know, me getting a salad from Nordstrom Cafe, what you would want to do is click the photo again, then you would hover over to this edit button at the end of the page or the end of the photo. You would click that edit button and then you see here you can edit almost everything within the photo. So you can edit the actual verbiage, the comment that you attach to the photo. You can tag who you're with. You can add the location of where it was taken or you can change the date so it sets differently on your timeline. But what you were really focusing on is changing this visibility of who can see it and who cannot. So by clicking this drop down arrow, excuse me, you can set it to public, you can set it to, you know, having your friends see it. And there are different other ways that you can customize the visibility of your mobile uploads. But again, you would have to click within that album and click the uh, individual picture that you'd like to edit. So the next thing is for photos, uh, for photos uploaded, you know, from a camera or a memory device, what you can do, it's a little bit easier. You can simply set the privacy settings for all the photos with one click. So I recently got married, and so one of the things that you can change is, you know, if you don't want certain people seeing, you know, your albums that have been uploaded from a, from a memory device or from your camera, you can, again, change the privacy settings for every single album with one click. So here, you know, I can change my wedding photo from, you know, public, from friends to public. Again, the same um, privacy settings are available as custom, as, I'm sorry, your mobile uploads, but the cool thing with any uh, photos uploaded from your albums is you can do it in one click rather than having to go to each individual photo. So I really don't know why, you know, the settings are a little bit more strenuous for mobile uploads compared to uh, uploads up, uploads from a mobile device, or I'm sorry, from a memory device. But that's just kind of the process now. Hopefully it'll change, but just wanted to kind of give you those two options if you needed to change your visibility for your mobile uploads versus uh, any uploads from a, from a memory device. So a couple other neat features that you can do with your photo privacy settings is you can approve a photo tag before it shows on your page. You can also remove a tag, request your friend to take down a photo, or block a person altogether if they're adding photos that are not um, in, the like, in your likeness or photos that you do not want to be added. So um, that's a really great feature too that you can do. So, so not only can your friends tag you in photos, which we just talked about, they can also tag you at places. So you may see whenever you're on Facebook on your home feed, so-and-so was tagged at, you know, whatever mall or amusement park, um, restaurant. That functionality is now available with Facebook. So many people don't want, you know, their friends to tag them if they're at a certain place for security reasons, for safety reasons, or just because they don't want everyone knowing where they are. It just depends. So if you don't want others knowing where you are, then setting preferences in the timeline and tagging section of your privacy settings is really important. So I'll quickly show you where that's located. So if you um, go to the top of your Facebook page, you can actually navigate to the privacy settings tab through, your, through the home drop down arrow. And where you'll want to navigate to is the timeline and tagging area here. You'll want to expand that by hitting edit settings. And then here is where you can change all of those privacy settings regarding tagging. So make sure you do that if you don't want to be tagged at certain places or if you want to approve those tags before they go live on Facebook. So the next cool thing you can do is view your page as a certain person. This is really great if you think you've set your privacy settings to, you know, a certain level, but for whatever reason, you're afraid that someone can still see uh, your privacy set or see something that you don't want them to see. So a cool thing I'll show you quickly is how you can allow people to um, see certain things you want them to see or not see the things you don't want them to see. So if you go to your timeline, 
what you'll want to do is you want to click the arrow next to this um, settings wheel that you see here. So by clicking this drop down arrow, you can view your page as any of your friends, which is really neat. So that way you're confirmed about you know, who can see what and who cannot see what. So for trial purposes, I'll just enter my mom. You know, although I'm grown and married, I always like to see what she can see. <laughs> So if you click, you know, you start typing in your friend's name, you can type, you know, you can click whoever you'd like to select. So it shows you the person's, you know, uh, Facebook profile. So it confirms that this is that person you're viewing your page in light of. And again, you can see what they can see, which is really neat. So you might want to try that just to make sure that you have all your bases covered regarding who can see what. So next, this is really for those um, page admins and, and community managers that uh, speak in the voice of their page. If you run your, your brand or your business's Facebook page, this is a really, really um, key feature to know. So uh, this will just help you be sure that you're posting content as your page, not only as yourself, but by navigating to the admin panel bar, you can select, which I'll show you here. So. Um, I am an admin of our demo page, which is Christina Lakes, Alaska. So like I just said, you can navigate to the admin panel bar, which is right here. By selecting the edit page drop down arrow, you can use the page as your page. So that way, whenever you post content, you know, or share a photo or post content here, you're actually speaking in the voice of your brand. So once I hit post, you'll see that it was Christina Lakes Alaska Polar Drive saying that rather than Ainsley Set Earth. So again, just to ensure that you're speaking in the voice of your brand, go to your brand's page, navigate to the admin panel, hit edit page, and make sure that you're in the mode of using your page as yourself. You can always revert back to or using the page as your brand. You can always revert back to using the page as yourself once you're finished posting that content. So the next thing I want to talk about, and you know, in the interest of time, um, and as not to overwhelm you, I didn't go through each privacy setting, but I did cover the settings that I thought were pertinent that you should know, important to people in our industry. And especially for the role you play as a business, all of these key features I, I focused on would really help you out for that purpose. So we'll get into the ignition points and what you can do today. So what you can do from this point on is just ask yourself if you're protected. Safety and assurance lies within knowing, not assuming. Update your settings and decide on how much information you're comfortable sharing. That's really important. And viewing your page as, you know, whatever friend would help you figure out what you're comfortable sharing and what you're not comfortable sharing. Ultimately, you should do everything to protect your digital reputation, which ultimately helps uphold your brand's reputation, which is very, very important. So what I want to do next is show a few links with you that really are, um, are important that you could save as bookmarks and refer to these links. They're from Facebook, so they're from the source. Um, Facebook provides really great resources, and the first link is the privacy tab that um, I was at earlier today, which we'll share with you now. And then the second tab, the second uh, link, I'm sorry, is the guide, which was this Facebook guide on timeline, which goes in depth about you know what you can share when you're operating in the new timeline layout. So this is really great for you page admins who have switched over to timeline but aren't really sure you know who's seeing what or uh, how you can operate for your brand. So this link is really great in sharing that.
So this was a pretty short one since it was mostly demo. I hope that you know you got some great tidbits of information and I'll go through the questions quickly to see if you know I need to revisit anything for you. But really, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have that we didn't answer earlier. Courtney did a great job of answering your questions on the spot, but if you have any of these questions, definitely, you know, let me know now. Yes, Jennifer, the links will be included. Um, we will send you a follow-up recording to this presentation in case you miss anything because I know I went pretty fast um, in the interest of time but uh, yes you will have these links available to you but um, the cool thing is that if you just type in privacy in your search bar on Facebook it'll take you straight to it so the next let me just go through some of these questions for you um, a great question that we had to come in is, you know, people, some people know, this is from Christy, she says, you know, what about creating an alias account? And I think what Christy is saying is that uh, she has seen some people create, you know, an alias account, meaning not their personal account, but another profile page, which is in the likeness of themselves, but not technically themselves. So it could be, you know, Ansley for rent, or Ansley so-and-so. And so, um, in most cases, I would I would, you know, best practice is to just be yourself, but privacy settings allow you not to even have to create an alias account because you can really speak in the voice of your brand by going to use the page as, you know, your brand, and you can set your privacy settings to really kind of be like a Fort Knox on Facebook so that no one can penetrate any of your personal information, photos, content, any of that stuff on Facebook because, you know, Facebook does a really great job of allowing you to toggle between your brand, speaking as your brand, and speaking as yourself. So there's really no need to create an alias account. And in most cases, that, that account may be flagged by Facebook because they only recognize certain pages, which I'll show you, actually. Uh, if you go to this link here, which is facebook.com pages backslash create .php, Facebook only recognizes these type of pages. So you can only create, you know, a profile page which allows you to be yourself. And then your other six options are creating pages in the, you know, a local business or place, a company, organization, or institution, a brand or product, which most of you guys are in the brand or product category, or company, organization, or institution category for the most part. This is the audience I'm speaking to today. But in the case, you know, if we have some movers and shakers or brand influencers, some, you know, big wigs in our industry, uh, rather than operating from their Facebook business page, a lot of people will yeah, be a public figure, um, artist, or brand. So it just depends on, you know, what voice you're speaking in. But for the most, for the most part, you will only be operating as yourself or as, you know, toggling between yourself and your company or toggling between yourself and your brand or product. So again, I do not suggest creating an alias account. Number one, it can be flagged. Number two, you know, for, for, um, Facebook recognizes your government ID, your government given name, so your government issued name. So again, it's just kind of a best practice to speak in two voices, which are um, kosher with Facebook, which are yourself and a company or yourself and brand or product for today's purposes. So again, if you're not sure, just kind of visit this page, and it really gives you a great idea of what you know each uh, each page means. So um, you know that's pretty much what I have for you today. I, I really appreciate you allocating your time to learn about Facebook privacy settings. So to wrap things up, I really again appreciate your time and hope that you know how to get started in setting your privacy settings and your privacy preferences. So on behalf of Front Media Solutions, have a great day, and I look forward to talking to you next month. Take care, everyone.